look back to chapter 11. We're going to talk about addition to all kinds. Starting at 11.7. So we're picking up. We introduced this. Now we're just going to look at these mechanisms. Section 11.7 is addition of hydrogen halides. So let's dive in. We're going to look at one butyne. I'll try to specify here two equivalents or excess. We've got HBr. Before we write the product of the mechanism, let's draw it out. How do we? How do these behave? We have an HBr bond. The alkyne is going to attack just like an alkene did. Kick out the Br minus. These are going to give rise to a what we call a vinyl carbocation. There is some debate about what is formed here. In some cases, um, this vinyl carbocation, I kind of show it at that angle. It's, it's SP hybridized, though, but you get a Br minus released there. Kind of circle the H that's added, kind of like we did before. Protonate, you get a carbocation. It's very similar to the alkene. The point is it just it doesn't just stop here. Because now you have an alkene. <clears throat> and a second equivalent of HBr can then come in. To give you following. So got a carbocation. Anytime you can draw a resonance form, you should draw it. This is a good introduction to heteroatom stabilized carbocations. Let me say that again. Heteroatom stabilized carbocations. We talked about how alkyl groups can stabilize carbocations. Heteroatoms even more so. And you can draw a resonance form for this. I'm going to show this pair of electrons pushing in. There's an empty p orbital on that carbocation. What do we have? is a, I'm going to abbreviate the CH3, we have the Br now plus on the Br. Okay, we don't like to put plus charges on halogens too much, but that's fine. Okay, so draw that resonance form, it's resonance stabilized. What was left over here was Br minus. Okay, you could draw that cation twice if you wanted to, or you could just draw the resonance structure and leave off this arrow. That'd be fine too. We're going to show this Br minus attacking to give the following product. The geminal dibromide. Okay. So we have a heteroatom stabilizing the resonance form, and be able to communicate that, and that's why you get the carbocation at that position, because the bromine is probably stabilizing it. <clears throat> so that's an addition of a hydrogen uh, HBr across an alkyne. Then you could go through the same mechanism with HCl. We'll give you, what I'm going to do is give you a couple take-homes. 
predict these products and go through the mechanism. Another terminal, HBR, two equivalents. What's the product? Right through the mechanism. Always do the mechanism for all these take homes. And feel free to bring one of these questions to the study session, review session, whatever you want to call it. Draw those products, work through the mechanism. What's going to happen first? Give you the first arrow. Right. So use the mechanism I just gave you to go through and do these, these problems. They're just slightly different problems. Okay. So that's two equivalents. In some sense, maybe it's better to just start with this one, but you can stop at the vinyl halide. We call it a vinyl or alkenyl halide. Let's show you what I mean. We're going to add one equivalent. We're going to work through the mechanism first. Okay, we could line up the HCl either way. Okay, let's line it up so that we, or, or show the addition, so that we get the more stable carbocation. There's still the same kind of Markonikov types of rules, is that you get protonation, and you're going to form the more substituted funny looking carbocation. Okay? You're going to form it where there's more alkyl groups stabilizing that. And then the Cl minus will come in there and capture that and give you the product alkene. Call that a vinyl chloride. And the reason we can rationalize that you can use one equivalent to form this is what do you have? You have a dipole. So these pi electrons of the alkene, those are pi electrons. They are less um, basic, okay? They're less likely to protonate, so you can't actually stop because this is pulling electron density away. Chloride's pulling electron density away. So this alkene is less likely to go pick up that proton. Okay. Give you another take home. Same idea. Work through this mechanism. That's a CH2, CH3. HBr, one equivalent. What do we get here? I almost gave you the answer. Uh, you're going to get a vinyl bromide, so work through that same kind of, same kind of problem. Okay. So that's hydrohalogenation of uh, alkynes. Okay. Very similarly, we're going to look at 11.8, and that is addition of just halogens. Okay. We're only going to use symmetrical alkynes here. Okay. Just for simplicity, um, and let's show what we mean by that. Okay, so same idea. Let's start with symmetrical alkyne. We're going to add Br2 to equivalents, and we're going to get a product. Let's work through the mechanism. How do how does Br2 interact with Alkynes, or sites of unsaturation, the alkyne is going to attack. The middle of that bond is going to attack. Make this bond a little bit bigger. It's going to attack, and then this pair of electrons is going to attack the carbon. That's going to leave. Okay. So what are we going to get? We're going to get a bromonium, but it's going to be like a vinyl bromonium. It's going to be pretty strained, but rationalize things forming like this. And then what do we have? We have a Br minus associated with that plus 
if you wanted to think about it as SN2 like there's there's issues with this mechanism I'll say we're gonna draw it this way there's uh, different thoughts about this but essentially you just get consecutive uh, addition of halogen okay so you're gonna get a trans vinyl uh, dihalide okay again it's it's SN2 like that's why we're going to rationalize the trans okay. Okay. and then what's going to happen next the second equivalent of BR2 He's going to do the same thing, just repetitive. And really, the stereochemistry is going to become irrelevant, so we're not going to bother showing that. Okay, you don't have to show it. halide right because we there's no chiral center so cis trans whatever doesn't matter this will be important this trans dihalide will show a single equivalent going to that as well get those products and uh, that's the, the tetrahalide okay so Give you a couple take homes. What would happen with Cl2, two equivalents? Again, the point of this is not for you to just say, to go back and look, oh, we got four bromides. Work through the mechanism. How do you solve a problem like this? Add Cl2 twice, go through the exact same mechanism, but try to do it on your own first. Okay? How about with one equivalent? Go through that mechanism, CL2 or BR2, whatever the case may be, one equivalent. Go through and think about what you get. You'll get the trans dihalide. All right? So I'll give you a hint that you get trans. Um, so that's all I want to do for this uh, video is um, just give you a, a quick view of the um, Hydrohalogenation and the halogenation. We don't spend, we don't dig quite as deep on alkynes, but it's um, we we show these reactions. They're great reactions, and um, so that's that's what we have for for those. And we'll uh, we'll come back next time and look at hydration and hydroboration. Those we'll spend a little more time on. They're more complicated.